Hello and welcome to another update video about ETH. So the overall focus on the ETH chart is still on further downside. Um, if we really zoom out to the to the bigger picture, we are still tracking an overall higher level, higher wave degree bullish scenario. Yeah, because the waves on the larger time frame here are bullish. However, and again, there are sometimes misunderstandings. I don't know. I I, I highlight it so often. We are tracking bullish scenarios, but we cannot confirm yet that in this current correction that a low is in. So we have to focus further on the downside until the price gives us a signal that this downtrend that basically started here in April is over. This downtrend is not over yet. Okay, while on the larger time frame we have an uptrend, we have on a smaller time frame a downtrend. And that's what we're following in the daily analysis. It could very much be that this downtrend that we're tracking is going to invalidate this higher level uptrend. Okay, but that's why we're tracking the, the um, support zones here. So as I already said, below 1200, the overall uptrend will turn into an overall downtrend. But in the daily analysis, we focus on the downside and we have been for many, many weeks, I think since this high in July, because we haven't been able to confirm anywhere a low in place for this correction. But we're using the micro counts to understand when a pattern emerges that can confirm such a low for us, okay? That can confirm to us, or at least at least indicate to us, that a low has been established in this correction, okay? But overall, yeah, we're still tracking for higher prices because the, there is an uptrend. There are five waves to the upside, three wave pullbacks. Yeah, the move down looks corrective. We're still above support area. So at the moment, there isn't um, a need yet, at least, to put something more bearish on the on the bigger picture here, on the bigger picture chart. But um, it doesn't really matter in the short term because in the short term, we're tracking for lower anyway. So as soon as on the shorter time frame, here on the smaller time frame, we see a pattern that gives us confidence that the uptrend is on the larger time frame is continuing, yeah, and that this local downtrend that stopped or that started, sorry, that started in April, that this is slowing down or finished. Um, then we will highlight that and then it would be back in line with the overall uptrend we're tracking. I hope that makes sense. So bigger picture, uptrend. In the daily updates, we're focusing on the downtrend that started in April, but that downtrend is small enough not to affect the bigger picture uptrend. You can be bullish on one time frame, you can be bearish on one on the other time frame. Yeah, that's I think where some people that some people don't understand yet that this is very, very important. You have to be able to switch between time frames. I can be super bullish on the five minute time frame, but I can be bearish on the one day time frame, for example. Okay, so that all is uh, very important to understand, but I try to highlight that as often as possible. What most people who are following the shorter time frame wave counts here need to understand is that we are still tracking for lower. But obviously, since we've seen this first five wave move up here on the you could say 15 minute time frame yeah we forecasted higher prices but that should only become a three wave move a corrective rally into resistance and so far we've he we've had these higher prices yeah and we are now in the resistance area and we already got rejected um and i think there could be a few more squiggles higher here in this abc structure in a wave two but it will or i shouldn't say it will it should get exhausted in this price range. So it should get exhausted here between 1638 and $1,700. 1664 is in between, golden ratio, very important resistance level here in between. Um, I would be watching here for a reaction at one of these FIP levels, yeah? And the higher we go, obviously, the you could say the better the reward to risk ratio for a short trade. However, a break above $1,700 would indicate that something more bullish is going on, yeah? For example, at the moment, we're just tracking a three wave move to the upside, basically in accordance with the continuation of the downtrend. And the short term uptrend that we currently see is just sort of a correction of what happened here. Yeah. Um, but there are certain limits of what this correction should do, and it shouldn't really get above 1700, at least not on a sustained basis. So that means if we see a sustained break above resistance, it indicates something more bullish is going on. If that is even happening in five waves, then we have a much more bullish yeah, potential at least, but it needs to prove itself by 
showing us three waves down afterwards. Because if we don't see the three waves down, we could be in a larger and much larger corrective pattern. Now, again, that, that would all go too far. But what you need to understand is that above $1,700, something more bullish might come into play. But it would still need to prove itself um, through the first deeper pullback that is going to happen. But um, <clears throat> we have to deal with that question only after the price is broken above $1,700. Until then, the current forecast um, is just being followed currently. Yeah, higher prices in a correction has been the forecast for basically this week after we've seen the first five wave move up. Okay, so we were tracking a three wave pullback that seems to have been finished or seems to have finished here on the 13th of uh, September. But then the forecast was on a higher high above the A wave eventually to complete this wave two. Because in a wave two, you need three waves, an A wave, a B wave and a C wave. The C wave seems to be unfolding as an ending diagonal. Yeah, it could be that this wave three is already done. Um, it might also be that the third wave is still unfolding. That's not entirely clear. But bear in mind, we're dealing here really with a 15 minute chart. So these wave counts just do change, especially in a diagonal. But so far, I haven't got any confirmation that the diagonal is over. Um, and I will not rule out, I will not rule out that it's coming down lower once more in the support region, yeah? But first of all, to complete this diagonal, I'd like to see five waves. I haven't got the five waves. So basically, overall, the situation hasn't changed. I think there could be a few more squiggles higher. But ultimately, from this resistance area, there should be a rejection in the current wave count. So I keep you updated. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.